Hello everyone. Things are a bit different at the moment, aren't they? Because we've got some of our children in school every day, some of you at home. And I know that for those of you at home, it might feel a bit strange knowing that some of your friends are in school. So I thought that we might uh, share a few stories together from the school building. And the first one I want to start with is one of my very favourites. It's called The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright. Now she's a fantastic children's author and she's she's only really started writing books quite recently. If you're in Robbins, you might remember this because I read this to your class. This is the first one we're going to share together, so I really hope you enjoy it. The Lion Inside is by Rachel Bright and it's illustrated by Jim Field. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him, ever at all. He got trod on, and sat on, and missed out for stuff, ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. This huge toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could roar. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd he was made of strong stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then, late one dark night in his Minnie Mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse with the weeniest squeak was a little more grrr and a little less meek? Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but... You make friends and join in and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse. I must find out how. I will learn how to roar and I will learn it now. But gulp, oh my gosh. There was only one beast who could teach him this thing but might make him a feast. It was time to be strong. Take a chance. After all, forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave, and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The further he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to... Nose. Ahem, gulp, pardon me, wake up, Mr. Lion, you've got company. Um, squeak, Mr. Lion, what I've come to you for is squeak. Do you think you could teach me to roar? A silence befell that twinkling plain. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time slowed right down, why it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out an eek. The lion was shaking, his paws all a fumble. He was backing away with a scrambling tumble. Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse Pete, I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment for sure, when Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out, and for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better now that rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head, and Lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day, they both learned that, no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside.
I love that story. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you again next week for another one.